morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining us for this um, info session, the first info session and Q&A on the East Africa Regional Innovation Call. We are exi excited to have you here. My name is Rachel Longare, and I work with IntelliCup, who um, jointly with uh, Niras are managing this call. Please feel, us, uh, feel free to drop your email on the chat box. Uh, tell us where you're joining from and which country and uh, what you're looking to get from this info session. And uh, also feel free to also start uh, dropping in your questions there. Before we go into the presentation, it would be good to first uh, find out why you have joined us today. And I'll hand it over to Ariel to put up her screen so that we can do a small poll. Hi, guys. Welcome. I've just put a link to our little Mentimeter poll in the chat box. Um, so if you can just go there, I'm going to pull my screen up. Uh, we just basically want to know why you joined us um, today. So I will pull my screen up. So uh, let us know if you're here to learn you know, more about the program benefits, to see maybe if you qualify for the program, uh, if you're here to learn about funding opportunities, if you're just curious uh, as to what's going on or some other reason. So um, good to see, thanks for the votes coming in. Okay, so mostly around program benefits and qualifying for the program. I'm gonna, end the poll in probably about another five seconds or so. Um, so get your votes in. I would be curious for the person who said other, uh, why you joined the session. So let us know in the chat if you don't mind. Um, so great, most people are really here to learn about the program benefits and to see if they qualify. I think um, that's awesome. And that's exactly why we're doing this session with you guys today. Um, so I will go ahead and, and stop my, my screen share now. So Rachel, back to you. And thanks for everyone uh, for voting and welcome. Great. Thank you very much, Ariel. Um, Margaret, please put up the presentation. But as that comes up, um, so We4F, um, there's a broader team that is uh, behind We4F and they are going to just introduce themselves shortly. But I'll also just um, take you through um, the high level agenda on what we seek to achieve today. So uh, uh, the first thing is just to make introductions to the team that um, is going to support um, this whole process through the innovation call, as well as the business advisory and access to finance support that we are going to talk about shortly. Um, and also to just uh, give you an overview of uh, what We4F is all about, what, what the objectives of the East Africa Hub are, and uh, also talk about the call for application process, the eligibility criteria in a little uh, more detail. We'll also have our colleagues that are um, uh, managing the business advisory and access to finance, who will um, take you through what uh, we are looking at achieving um, under, under those components of the program. And uh, to the fun part, um, where we are going to seek more um, questions from you to just um, see um, any challenges that you're going through or any doubts that you have um, in mind. So as I mentioned, we have a big um, team uh, from um, GIZ, who are our um, uh, project uh, funders and who are implementing the We4F uh, uh, program in the East Africa region on behalf of um, the other founding partners. I'm not sure whether Lucy or Mark Ben um, is on the call. Is of them can act by um, doing the introduction if they're here. All right, if not, um, I'll move to Steve, who is the team leader. Steve. Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for coming. So uh, essentially, I'm the team leader for the whole project uh, and really wish to have you ask a lot of questions to make sure that you know, things are clarified. Thank you and really don't hesitate to ask questions both to us, the team, and even in the chat box. Thank you. Great, thank you, Steve. Um, Benson, uh, Martin, any of you on the call? Good morning, everyone. My name is Martin, and I'm supporting BDS, especially the aspect on access to finance. 
and I look forward to a good session. Uh, looking forward to addressing any queries. Thank you. Benson, are you in? If not, we move to Ariel. Hi, everyone. My name is Ariel, based in Nairobi with Rachel. Uh, I work with IntelliCap and I'm supporting the overall call for applications. So thanks for everyone for joining today. You're most welcome. Thank you, Ariel. Um, so to talk uh, about uh, what the We for Air program is about and the objectives of the East Africa Hub, I'll hand it over to Steve. Um, take us through that. Yes, so now, uh, what's the We for Air? So essentially, the Water and Energy Food for Food program is a program that is really focused on supporting scaling or to helping companies transition into scale in the water energy and food program the idea is really to support companies in those seven countries that we'll discuss later on and what i would say is that the water energy and food program is historically coming from two previous programs that were managed by um, different donors especially the water sustainable water for food and power, powering agriculture um, the whole idea really came from the social capital market events in 2019, where those two programs decided to merge to create, uh, you know, various programs to support the nexus of water, energy, and food. A lot of it, uh, you know, directed at productive use of energy, renewable energy preferably, and also an increased uh, utilization of more efficient water systems to produce food. Um, Really, the idea is to promote those nexuses at the earlier um, at the earlier stages possible and develop an ecosystem in the seven countries that we are targeting, uh, knowing that uh, a similar programs have been run in MENA, uh, Middle East and North Africa, and South and Southeast Asia, with another one upcoming for West Africa in the, in the next 12 months. So I hope it gives you a bit of a flavor. Um, Essentially, we're all in the you know, circular economy or climate energy where we want to protect the environment while still producing food and using uh, renewable sources of energy and water. Uh, I think I'll stop there. And the next slide, please. Okay, then we get to the technicals. <laughs> so do you want to take it? Oh, I, I can take it. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Okay, so the hub today is really for entrepreneurs is to really help you expand, grow, and raise capital. So that really the idea is that you've started an innovation, a solution that is available in one country or region within the country. And the idea of the program is to provide you technical assistance in terms of video development services, access to finance, and a bit of money to really kick you start, kick start your scale up solutions into the ecosystem. The other aspect is really to grow, make you grow. And how do you grow as a company is really generating more return. So one of the KPIs really in this project is we really want to see you grow within the 15th to 18th month We support you, your revenue. And that means that you yourself needs to understand, okay, what makes your revenue uh, mix and how you can look at your cost mix as well and how you can scale your technology and what tweaks needs to happen. And obviously all of those things cannot happen without raising capital in the form of equity, debt, or any other instrument. And therefore this program really focuses on getting either companies that are already kind of in the pipeline or some investors, or are looking for serious investors to scale them up. So we really want to focus on basically doing the groundwork for investors to come in, either financial institutions, guarantees an institution, private equity fund, venture capital fund, impact funds, any other organization that can really support you to grow, working capital, research and development grants, etc. We're not very keen on grants too much. We really want to focus on companies that really want to grow their returns, or grow their turnover, and that's, that's essentially uh, it. Expand, grow, and raise capital with us. Next slide.
Rachel or Ariel? Okay, shall I continue? <laughs> okay, so what are the criteria? The key criteria is one, you have to be in the geography. So if you're in Zambia, I'm sorry, it will not work. So it's one of the seven countries that we have, we are focusing on. Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Malawi, and Somalia. Why these seven countries? Because obviously we believe that the ecosystem can benefit from economies of scale around the same type of uh, business environment, the same type of regulation, et cetera, that have been harmonized more and more. Obviously, we want legally registered or incorporated companies that are for profit. So how old must the company be? We're considering 18 months plus, and really, initially, we're considering much later uh, stage companies where we thought that because these innovations are quite recent in the ecosystem, we still need to consider companies that are at the earlier stage of their growth or their uh, um, age, saying 18 months plus. In terms of size of company, and that's gonna be a big contention uh, subject later on, I know, we're looking at companies that have turnover between 50,000 to 500,000 euros annual, and with between five and 200 employees. We will discuss that further down. I'm sure questions will come up. In terms of ambition, as I mentioned, it's very important for the companies to be at a stage where they want to transition to growth or already growing, but need a big push and support in terms of helping them business, um, de develop their businesses in other geographies within a country or out of another country, or really focusing on growth by uh, you know, maybe having new product lines to diversify the initial innovation that are complementary to what they're doing. And the last aspect is really to get the, the companies have a, to have an impact in the ecosystem. So you need to be able to demonstrate direct or indirect impact to the ecosystem where you're acting. Maybe you've looked at, you know, uh, you, you're doing, let's say, uh, water irrigation, drip irrigation system, et cetera, that really is innovative. And that means that you're expanding your geographical reach and having actual impact on farmers. We like small farmers, women, small farmers in particular, but they're not all. Um, we're also looking at, you know, how, what kind of impact you will have on youth. Uh, next slide, please. So what thematic areas? I think I mentioned them earlier. It's at the nexus of water, energy, and food. So, Again, we're looking for companies, enterprises that are working throughout the whole value chain from you know, primary to processing, to distribution, to storage, for information, data, uh, you know, all these uh, fancy things that you know, are raging around in terms of new technologies, drones, et cetera, we're also interested, all the way to consumers and market. So we're really looking at the whole value chain. And if you have innovative financial or digital solutions that help any of those boxes, please apply. Um, one of the things I would say, for instance, is that uh, water, for instance, in the Asa regions in Kenya or in Somalia or in a part of Ethiopia would be a critical element because those areas are, are deserted. How do you process your food? Do you use solar drive? Do you use any other solution that uses renewable energy to process and grow food will be interested. Um, so in essence, we are looking at companies that are bringing innovative solutions in the energy, water and food nexus across the whole region. Next slide. So maybe uh, just a, another point on the previous slide, it's very important for all of you who are applying, who are considering to apply, to spend a lot of time on the, on the website, on the thematic areas, the thematic areas on the website to really understand the type of uh, technologies we are considering. So what's your benefit? And that was one of the questions on the Menti poll. You'll be part of a, a, the first accelerator of companies in the water and energy, for food nexus, where we would select 15 companies minimum across the seven countries will be shortlisted and really brought to a certain level by the end of the program through a very structured 
business and development and access to finance program, whereby we want to make sure that you raise capital, grow your, your annual revenue or turnover, and scale the innovations that you, you are already developing. So what form does that take? It's obviously technical assistance between 50 and 500,000 euros. And also to some extent, and that also is in the FAQ, uh, a level of uh, um, uh, cash contribution. And that will be on a case by case basis for some of the startup. We understand financing is critical, but we want to make sure that you contribute to that. And also we will potentially we will ask for some of matching funds or in cash or in kind for, from your side as well. So what are the financing opportunities? By joining the program, we would be able to put you in touch with select number of investors in the ecosystem that we're partnering with to be able to make you scale. Mostly investors who already have a, an appetite for the, uh, the nexus, a typical would be you know, uh, all these energy funds or impact investors or financial institutions who have an appetite for green and renewable energy. I don't want to mention specific names at this point that will be part of the program uh, going forward. Um, so the idea also is that this funding is based on results or milestones so that we're sure that as you go along the way, you achieve your own KPIs and we support you to reach those ones. So for those who be selected, the 15 companies at least, we will make sure that when we contract you on this program, you decide on the key performance indicators you want to reach and we help you support you with local and international experts along the way. Next slide, please. So what is the selection process? Uh, we expected more than 200 applicants where we would say that from our experience, we get about 80 qualifying applications, 50 will be identified for follow up interviews and 35 will be trained, selected and trained to pitch to an expert panel. After that, between 50 and 20 will be effectively contracted for the program with clear objectives to scale and grow your innovations. Next. So what is the timeline? So application will be launching on, I've launched, sorry, on May, on May uh, uh, 18th, so a week ago. Uh, we're doing the implementation session now, as you can see, and essentially it will be a number of Q&A questions that will be answered along the time until the end of the uh, closure of the application on 15th of June. In between, please, regularly, if not daily, if you are considering applying or applying, look at the FAQs because we're updating all the answers to the questions that are regularly asked, either by email or directly to us on the FAQ. So in terms of timeline, so after you submit your application in June, mid-June, by end of June, we'd have initially done an evaluation and scoring against the set criteria. Again, look at the FAQ. By mid-July, we'd interview in the high potential applicants. End of July, we'd have the 35 shortlisted finalists announced and prepared for pitching. And by late August, we'd have the pitch done to the expert panel and this announcement of the selected companies. Make sure that when you're applying, you know that you're going to dedicate somebody or several people within your company two to four hours or more, depending on the level of preparedness for this particular program. It's for you, but also we want to make sure that we engage with serious entrepreneurs who really want to scale. Next slide. Thank you, Steve. I, we, the next slide is on um, oh. the business advisory mm -hmm. and access to finance. Um, okay. Thank you so much for taking us through that. So I'll hand it over to um, Martin to talk about um, the business advisory and access to finance component of, of the program, which will take uh, between the 15 to 18 months that Steve spoke about. Martin, over to you. Thanks, Rachel. So once we we will establish the entrepreneurs that you have, the SMEs that you are going to work with, uh, 
as Steve has explained. So the next phase is now to, to get to the trenches and roll, uh, roll up your sli our sleeves. And so the first exercise will be to establish where are these SMEs as regards uh, whether it's, it's any customer face related problems or finance uh, related or business uh, or ecosystem related problems. What are those, uh, how is the situation of, of these SMEs? And, and so we'll have an, an, an assessment at this level uh, to, to just be able to establish uh, how, what, what, you know, what, 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 would be, what are the gaps that exist in these SMEs? And then um, combining that, of course, is the, is, 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 the, is the performance of the diagnostics. Again, an assessment that will also encompass looking at uh, uh, investment readiness. What are the gaps and how, what, you, what, what needs to be done for the SME to, to be able to attract investors is you know, how do you make sure that is alignment of the expectations, even from the supply side of capital that is investors. And then the next thing would be to now have an action plan. And this action plan would be very individualized. And, 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 and we at this point now, we'll, we are also going to work with uh, uh, business service providers. So these are experts, these are consultants who are based in all these markets that you'll be going to work with. And then uh, uh, again, through a competitive process, will will these business service providers will be the the, the, the people who are going to uh, administer the various treatment to these SMEs, whether it's uh, uh, it's it's marketing digest if for one who wants to expand to a to a different market or is things around product development for those who want to diversify their product rate. So we work with. Uh, 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 business services providers based in these markets. And then the some that was not mentioned that I, if in each of these countries, we have earmarked uh, business uh, experts. And again, these ones will be on hand to be able to, to work with SME, to, to, to work with SMEs and uh, uh, who will be able to eventually work with uh, the SMEs. Next page. Yeah, so this is a, a kind of a, a cocktail of all the, the services that we expect. This, again, this is not holistic, but we expect major, major, major this will be uh, composed most of the services that you are going to administer, whether it's investment readiness, uh, or uh, if, if you want to uh, access funding, how do you make sure that we prepare you so that at, at the end of the program or during the course of the program, you're able to attract whether it's impact investors or commercial funders or even uh, local debt providers like the commercial, uh, commercial banks. And then this program is also supposed to look at uh, whether it's, you know, how do you, how do you align, you know, your impact measurement, how do you make sure that you 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 know you are looking at uh, the low income segment of the market, and and then things around legal service and compliance, and and of course that comes also with things like taxation, whether it's environmental sustainability and matters around ESG, uh, market research analysis, and uh, uh, whether it's more financial modeling, which is very linked to investment readiness. Next slide. Yes, I so I had mentioned that uh, uh, I had sort of mentioned a bit on access to finance, which is very linked to the whole work around business advisory. And the essence of, or the main aim of access finance is to make sure that we package these SMEs uh, to be able to attract uh, invest, uh, invest, investors. And of course, be able to meet their capital goals, whether it's short term or middle term or long term. And so it is going to be, Again, at some assessment to make sure that we understand the current situation of the, of the enterprise uh, as regards being the ability to absorb uh, capital from uh, outside. And then after that, uh, we are going to support them, whether it's financial model modeling to improve, to, to package the business better, to show the current situation, and of course, try to focus how the business would pay out in the coming years. 
uh, things around, make sure that all the documentation, work with them to make sure that other document which the investors, uh, again, we know a lot of people come from the sector and even entrepreneurs know a lot of things fall through during the, the due diligence. So make sure that the data room is complete, whether it's the pitch deck, the financial model, whether it's your investment memorandum or the business plan and other key items of, of that investors will need. And then the next plan, will, the next thing we now to make sure that it's matchmaking. And the matchmaking in this case is not, we don't want just to do it the traditional way. We are just having pitching sessions or, or, or forums. But it's make sure that once that happens, it's also a conversation that is, we kick off that concern that happens. And because we are aware that it takes time to be able to close in capital and external financing. Uh, and then, of course, with that we'll be working. We don't. We see, We need to. We, see, we seek to leverage. Steve had mentioned that we seek to leverage uh, an investor database that uh, we've, we've been able to identify people who've done investments in the within the nexus that you are talking about the water uh, and energy that is for but linked to food systems. So these are people who've been tried and tested and and, and get to uh, just just make sure that there's a link up between the two. And the other thing is we want to also, uh, also make sure that we take advantage of some of the innovative financial mechanisms that you know are out there uh, so that we are not just pursuing uh, uh, what has been done before. But again, this is again uh, uh, working along the stakeholders as well as the financing or impacting uh, investing stakeholders who are outside there. And of course, the last thing is is, is to close those deals. Uh, this that's where the you know the print means. Uh, the pen means the ink, and and we, this is where we were able to. The, the, this is where the deals now would money will close in, and investors would go to take sticks in the company, uh, uh, as per on a case by case, or as the bad appetite of the investors. I believe, Rachel, that's all from my end, unless there are any questions which have come from the chat. Yes. Yep. Yes. Thank you so much uh martin thank you again steve for that uh, brief on on the innovation call and the processes that will be undertaken to um get to the business advisory support so a lot of good questions already coming in through the chat box and some of you had already submitted to um the registration link so thank you so much for that and uh, Martin, before you go off, uh, I can start with this question that is really seeking to understand more um, on the technical support that will be provided. So this question is from Beatrice, who asks, um, will there be support for feasibility studies to invest or expand uh, qualifying projects? Um, and further, she asks, uh, will the TA comprise of feasibility studies for clients seeking to invest in energy projects, for example, Cost benefit analysis for a biogas project, installation of solar dryers versus use of electric power. Martin, you want to take that? Thanks, thanks, Richard. Oh, that's a heavy one. Um, it's on 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 the on feasibility, feasibility studies. I, I, again, it will depend on. Remember, this is not our. Again, it will depend. It's going to be depend along on on the assessment of what is this feasibility about, and that's where we are saying now. That's the work of the team to to, to again uh, to 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 make a decision on that, because um, uh, we have to look at the it holistically from our companies from the from your company's endpoint in terms of what is this feasibility about. Is it uh, if if you are a manufacturer and you want to do a feasibility, let's say you've been doing, you've been using, uh, 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 and this is just an example. You'll be you be processing using grid power, and now you want to do a feasibility study to see how if solar, how solar would integrate solar into your production processes. Then that's that's a discussion that can have. It is very hard for me and Steve or any other member feel free to come in. It is very hard for me to give an explicit answer because this again will be assessed from a holistic angle of the whole enterprise in terms of the other areas uh, that the business uh, has performed as per the the criteria, assessment criteria. Yeah, if I can come in maybe to uh, to support uh, what uh, Martin just said. Uh, so. If I, I have to remind uh, you know, the audience, we're looking to 
help companies transition to scale or companies that are already scaling to further scale. So if your question relates to a feasibility study regarding something that you're already doing and then you want to scale it in another region or you know, have a new product line because you're already doing a similar thing, it, it will qualify. So for, you know, your question is for clients seeking to invest in energy projects, the cost benefits are for biogas instead of solar dryers versus use of electric power. This seems very specific. <laughs> so as I said, we'll look on a case by case basis, whether or not there is a business case where we say, look, this company wants to maybe diversify its source of power from uh, you know, non-renewable renewable to renewable, but essentially in all cases, it has to have a direct or indirect effect on farmers. So there are a number of parameters. But if I was going to answer your question from the top, it's yes, but. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you, Stephen Martin. So uh, the next question is also around access to finance. And the question is, what are the funding opportunities? Martin or Steve? Martin, do you want to come in? Yes, so this this project this program is mainly a TA. Its, it's main focus is a TA, uh, TA support to SMEs. But then on a case by case basis, there's going to be a corporate or a small sort of, uh, and I don't ask to focus so much on that, or on a grant. To stop. And, and this, of course, we have, have some conditions around matchmaking and such, matching funds. But then uh, most important is that we are preparing you to, we are doing a pre-investment tier to the business. So that, what that means is that once you're able to support all these tier areas, our aim is that once you're able to support all these tier, your tier corpus that you present and they, you know, they are allowed, then that makes your enterprise more appealing to the investors. So, and which at this point, I don't want to, to we we'll talk more about that because we want to plug in to the ecosystem and, and and work with investors whom we are aware, whom we have we are marked, and we found that they have an appetite for this sector. But one of the big challenges is that a lot of investees, a lot of SMEs, are usually not at a right point where the investor would be comfortable putting in their capital. I hope that addresses the. Hmm. If I may add. If I may add, <laughs> um, the one of the aspects is that you also should consider, you know, we are considering innovative way to support the ecosystem. So if, for instance, we need to organize a you know, line of credit with a bank and then we can come in with a guarantee structure or any kind of financial or digital solution to support and facilitate that, we would. So again, we've developed relationship with a number of you know, other organizations who can support you know, in that aspect. If you look at the, how do you call it, the uh, off-grid solar or household solar ecosystem or the clean cooking ecosystem, you know, there are a lot of financial solutions that have been developed around that. And we want to leverage on those relationships and innovations to push these water energy and food nexus to a new level. And it's very critical for food production, I mean, sustainable food production going down the road. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. So we have um, an, an, a winner from uh, Southeast Asia and who would uh, like to share a bit of his experience and also um, throw in a question on whether they are eligible to apply because they are part of the uh, Southeast Asia cohort. So Prata, uh, I'd give this, I'll give this opportunity to you to just um, speak briefly about your experience and also um, throw in your question. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so we are from Akisa. We are a company uh, providing renewable energy irrigation with innovative financing model for farmers. And we recently are winners of the Water and Energy for Food Asia Hub. And our, uh, we are also active in Malawi. That's why we are interested also in the East Africa core. 
our experience with the water and energy for food. Um, the application process, it's um, intense to be honest, but it's, it's really transparent. You know what criteria you're being judged on. Everything is very timely. So in that sense, it is very systematic and um, you know what to expect. Um, and the program itself, we were part of the Securing Water for Food program in the past. And uh, why we are interested in the call uh, is, it is a challenging project. It is one of the more difficult projects that we manage, but it gives you the, it challenges you to set ambitious goals and really makes you focus to achieve that. So in the end, you grow as a company. That's what we like about um, securing water for food and the water and energy for food settings. And that's why we want to apply now. Thank you, Pratap. So um, the question, Steve, is are they eligible to apply? They have operations in Malawi, but they're also um, an award winner in the Southeast Asia. So the, the, thank you very much uh, for, for the testimony, Pratap, and, uh, and for the question. So it, essentially, you are one in one of the countries, Malawi, yeah. If your annual revenue is less than 500,000 euros equivalent and you fit all the other eligibility criteria, you're eligible, right? There's no exclusion there. So, so long as the minimum eligibility criteria are there and you're operational in one of the seven countries, you're eligible. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, Jovenal in Uganda um, wants to know whether um, a, a, a coffee farmers organized as a cooperative union would uh, be eligible to apply. Uh, I'll give my two cents. So we are really focused on uh, for-profit uh, businesses and that um, if the corporate, just knowing the structure of the cooperative union may not qualify for this because uh, it needs to be a for-profit uh, generating um, company, but please, please feel free to weigh in also. You're on so mute. That's, yeah, I just realized that's always the conundrum. So in principle, cooperative cannot apply because they're cooperative, we need for-profit limited liability company, as Rachel said. So what I'll suggest is, um, hopefully this program will be successful. And in 18 months, if you set up a limited company that is owned by some of the key members of the cooperative who are shareholders of a limited company that is for-profit, then you may be able to apply in you know, 18 months plus. If this program is successful, there's funding, I mean, the number of conditions. But unfortunately, as it is, uh, we're really looking at companies, organizations, but essentially for-profit limited liability companies, all the likes, to be able to, to, be able to execute on, on this. Thank you. All right, the next question is around impact. Um, what's the focus of the program in terms of uh, depth versus width of the impact? I'm not Ariel, sure I understood this. Okay. I'm not sure I understood the question. Maybe Ariel wants to take it. But... So depth versus um, breadth of, yeah. of impact. If Tay, I think, submitted that question, uh, if you just want to unmute and clarify uh, sure. Tay, what the question is. Um, so the question is whether you, it's more important to reach more people or the people that you reach, you have more impact for them, and then it can also be a bit lower number. So I'll, I'll give my two cents and then I Steve can probably add to it. Um, so it's, it's a bit of both, right? Uh, and part of sort of the numbers and the scale of impact really depends on the nature of your business model. Um, if someone is working you know, with cooperatives or working with groups of farmers, then the number of farmers that they're working with is going to be far, far larger, right? So, so in part, it really depends on um, 
on the nature of your business. And we're taking that into account when we're evaluating these, knowing that different types of business models will have different you know, scales of impact. Um, so I would say it's not either or. Um, we're really looking at both. And at a portfolio level, we really want to um, incorporate sort of both in the program, both depths um, and breadth. I, I hope that answers your question. But Steve, feel free to, to contribute because I think that's a good question. That's, that's an ex excellent question. Um, and, you know, Ariel said, said it all. It really depends on you, what you want to achieve and how we can support you achieve those numbers. It's really not about us, really. Thank you. So, yes, I hope we've answered your, your question. Yes, so, thank um, you, Claire. Great. Um, so uh, from Orodi, um, he's at, the question is community, uh, they are a community-based organization transitioning into an MSME, do they qualify? They are clearly in the water energy for food next, but they are a CBO, so do they qualify? CBO transitioning into an MSME. <laughs> The transitioning, when, when, is, when is it happening? If it hasn't happened within 18 months ago, it's going to be very difficult for us to do it. It's one of the criteria where we, we want organizations that are about to scale or scaling, you know, and you may be too early stage at this point. But, you know, it's, you know, nothing prevents you from still applying, but I'm saying, you know, from what you're saying, if uh, the limited company hasn't been set up for at least 18 months, you're very unlikely to qualify. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from uh, Admo in Malawi, um, he's struggling to determine the theme for a concept that they would uh, put up about the biodigester to produce organic fertilizer for smallholder farmers and gas for cooking. Would such a concept be eligible? Mm, by digesters <laughs> for clean cooking. To produce organic um, So it's, it's a bit difficult to say. So the question you need to ask yourself is, is the innovation related to, you know, efficient use of renewable energy? We could say by the digesters produce gas, could be is renewable energy to some extent because it's transformation of a food waste into energy. So for me, it would qualify. But again, look at the thematics areas, look at that in detail, read the FAQs, etc., to determine. But from what you're saying, producing biodigester is a form of renewable energy that is used for clean cooking. It's not directly linked to producing food, but it may qualify depending on you know, the way it's, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, designed. So it's gonna be on a case by case. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Stephen. Just to add, so they say that they are also producing organic fertilizer. So that goes directly into food production. So if you can clearly um, show your linkage to water, food, energy, and again, looking at the thematic areas, uh, um, on, on the website where we've also given examples that you can look at uh, to see whether um, your, your, your enterprise applies. Okay, um, again, a question on partnership. Are partnerships allowed from the start? So um, add more, I'm not sure what um, this means. Is it a, a partnership in application or partnerships in your business model? Please, maybe you can unmute and ask the question. Oh, all right, Raja. So thanks a lot. So this is Admo um, from Malawi. I'm um, the CEO for an enterprise called Green Impact. So yeah, um, what I wanted to inquire is, uh, suppose we'd like to put up a, a concept. We have got two organizations with different uh, um, uh, maybe strengths. So we'd we'll like to uh, um, complement each other. Is, is that applicable? Uh, but maybe one of us could be the lead uh, applicant. Or else, uh, because you have talked of uh, matching funds, 
maybe we will find a financier that, that would like to put together a concept coming in as a, as, as a financier. Um, is that something that uh, this program can embrace? And the third, I wanted to ask in terms of percentages of co-financing, what's allowable? Is it 30%, is it 50%? Okay. Whether in kind or actual or in cash. Thank you, that's two questions. <laughs> so the first one is partnership or consortium. Thank you very much, Admiral. Uh, so the first one, obviously we would want to, but again, whatever the consortium or partnership is, at least the lead should have more than 18th month of existence. That's the condition, right? So then what we would say is that it's all your own internal stew, quote unquote, would still need a lead to make sure that, you know, whoever wants to be the lead executes on the growth strategy and everything else. So, you know, uh, and if it's a financial partner that you need, that it's, you know, I, I would say you need to determine whether or not the entity that is applying is legally registered, has all the bells and whistles we're looking for, then do apply. And if it's a consortium or a partnership, et cetera, it has to be made very clear in the application. That is one. On the, on the cash contribution that we could make, into the program on into the project or the company, we're requesting 20% contribution in kind or in cash. If it's in kind, we'll need to do evaluation or an evaluation depending of the in-kind contribution to make sure that you know, you know, the company has skin in the game when we actually disperse uh, capital. I hope it answers your question. Yeah, thank you, um, yeah thank, thanks a lot. Just to make sure I understand. So both companies have to be uh, within the seven countries or, or you can have a partner from outside these seven countries. The leading company that is the lead of the consortium must be registered in the country. One of okay. the seven countries. Great. Thanks a lot. That's well understood okay. now, thanks. Thank you. So um, questions coming in around um, the size of the business in terms of the annual turnover. So can a business that is uh, generating more than 500K Euro annually apply? And how many years must a company have an annual turnover between, of between uh, 50K to 500K Euros? So 500,000 Euros for East Africa, the seven countries that we're looking at is not an SME. Even 500,000 euros of annual revenue is not an SME. <laughs> so we, you would not be eligible. Uh, we've done a, an analysis of the seven countries, even their SME definition is widely heterogeneous and very different between countries. And you know the 500 euro level is quite high already so we would not accept any company that has actually had over the last you know three years i would say uh, five thousand euros of revenue now the minimum eligibility is 18 months of existence we put 18 months to make sure that companies that are in the earlier stages of their growth but who still manage to generate 550,000 euros equivalent and i know it's high but that, that's why we're looking at companies that are scaling and would be eligible. Um, I hope it clarifies the question. So 18 months plus of existence and less than 500,000 euros of revenue, which is already very high for the whole of uh, East Africa. Thank you. All right. Um, if we are operational in both Tanzania and Uganda, should two separate applications be submitted for each? country of operation? Mm, excellent question. I love this. So no, you have to choose which country applies to be the lead in this conversation. And there are in the application forms anyway, questions around your presence in other countries and the presence even of your product in other countries. So you may have you know, two entities in Tanzania and Uganda, but you want to expand to Ethiopia. 
And this could be a reason why you would apply for the program to expand your business into another country in the region. But you have to decide which uh, entity, Tanzania or Uganda, will present you know, the best uh, for, you know, application going forward. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, Steve. Um, hmm. So there's a, a very interesting question on what happens to the 75 enterprises that do not keep to the top team. <laughs> so they should re reapply for the next one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, from Ash Ashwini, um, does the project submission have to be at the initial innovative concept idea stage? So, um, we are, I, I can, respondents, if, um, feel free to add in. So we are looking at um, companies that are in the transitioning to scale or already scaling stages. So. Anything that is um, at concept um, or idea stage um, will not qualify for this. And again, even just looking at the revenue targets that we are looking at, um, that would be impossible for someone who is at the concept or idea stage to be generating. Steve, okay. All right. Um, from Adrian, if an applicant um, is successful on uh, receiving initial funding, A, what is the nature of that funding? B, is there a draft term sheet available? And C, what uh, MND commitments would the applicant be signing up to? So thank you for the three questions. Uh, so the first question was, what is the nature of the assistance? So essentially it's a contract for services. So you would tell us, okay, over the next 15 months, I want to do X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z will be clearly determined by timelines, maybe tasks, et cetera. And we would we'd agree with you on those timelines and deliverables and would support you, not financially directly, but a third party to get you there. So for instance, you would tell me, okay, X is opening an office in Kigali, Rwanda from Kenya, right? Fine. So does that align to your objective to scale your operation? Yes. Your innovation, fine. So we do help you support with business development services for you to one, maybe do an analysis of the best place to put the, the office, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Once that is done, you tell us, okay, milestone achieved. Next one is the why. Um, I want to you know, get, I don't know, X number of customers within six months. So we may support you in terms of you know, marketing outreach, you know, uh, you know, uh, customer awareness, et cetera, et cetera. Bang, the same happens. So you will define the key milestones that go into achieving your result, and we will pay the services for that. This is a portion that can go directly to you on a case-by-case -case basis, and those portion financial cash contribution would request a 20% uh, you know, uh, matching from you. So that was the first one. The second part of the question was, because in the meantime. Is there a draft term sheet available? So upon selection, you would get a draft term sheet when we select the 35 uh, companies, not before. But essentially, you know, those term sheets are, are just as an investor would do if we are interested in supporting you, and you fit all the criteria with supporting everything, you can scale, transition to scale and scale, we'll give you the term sheet, but not before. So it's not available as of now. But honestly, if you look very well at the FAQ, you would understand that will be a milestone basis. You define your own milestones, we'll check them, make sure that they are you know, reasonable, 
or at least um, challenging to some extent, as uh, Pratap was saying. And then we will support you to get there. Yes. And the last question. Uh, what MND commitment would the applicant be signing up to? So typically, we're looking at a frequency of probably initially on a monthly basis, maybe for three to six months, depending on the intensity of the need. And then thereafter, on a quarterly basis, provide us information about basically your own KPIs, really. These are numbers you should be following because ultimately, we want you to have an internal system whereby you know how, much, how you generate in revenue, you see what your cost bases are, how much you're spending on different things, and the ultimate customers, what they look like. So ideally, we would support you to collect data about your end customer distribution, men, women, youth, you know, what kind of affordability of your systems they have, if they need financing mechanism to acquire your innovation, et cetera, et cetera. And as I said, initially, we're going to do three to six months on a monthly basis, and then on a quarterly basis, because obviously we don't want to burden you in terms of M&E data collection, et cetera. We would contract a third party to support in that data collection, but you have to commit two to four hours of, for the whole program anyway, and part of it would be M&E. Maybe a point on that, for those who will be selected, we'll do an onboarding session where we'll go through all the financial and monitoring evaluation requirements. Uh, and again, we don't want that to be a burden because a lot of that it will be digitized online and uh, able to really be easily collected and reported. Uh, we want to focus on you growing and man managing your business rather than you know, focusing on reporting. Um, thanks, Steve. So the response to Adrian's um, questions, I've also covered some of the questions asked by Bernardo. Could you explain a bit more about the TA funding? Is the TA funding award a, a grant? Uh, what is eligible under this TA funding? So what Steve has spoken about has covered part of that. Um, but there's a question on, uh, is the TA provider for this funding selected by the company or we for you? And I link this um, to a question also asked by Tione um, from Malawi, how can I become part of the BDS uh, provider list? Um, so maybe um, Martin, you want to take this up? So is that, that's on the BDS, right? Yes, yeah, so one of the question is, is the TA provider for this funding selected by the company or uh, we for you? And then the second question was, how um, how do BDS providers become eligible to support enterprises in the program? All right, I I think I can take up the first question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the BDS or service provider will be the pre. We will give that opportunity to the service. I mean, the business to really. Um, you know, appoint a service provider. I'm sure you already know people who within your network um, engage with you on certain aspects of your business and services, but we will play an oversight role during that process of um, the selection process and practically just guide you through that whole process. Um, we will see to the fact that there is value <coughs> to uh, to 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 the to the business, uh, and that the service provider actually provides value to uh, to 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 the company. And so, our role will really just to guide you through that selection process. Um, hope that answers your question. The second question was on how how does a BDS provider become a, a part of the program? Uh, right. Yeah. So that's a really important question. Um, given the fact that most of these innovations or most of these applications are going to come spread out within the various seven countries, we are going to get to a point where we will do the initial pre-qualification process. So by way of what we call the expression of interests, uh, and, and, and at that point, we will 
be issuing out those EOIs uh, depending on the level of the applications that have come in to us to be able to pre-qualify service providers from say Malawi, Somali, Kenya, and, and the rest of the other countries. Uh, and so from that pool, then we'll be able to see if the select businesses will be able to uh, appoint, um, you know, businesses that, I mean, service providers that they are familiar with, or be able also to, um, you know, uh, nominate uh, service providers that are within the network that could be considered in the qualification uh, pool. So, so, so that, that, that would be essentially the, the process. And just to add on, on also the selection of the biggest providers by the business, we still have to follow some procurement guidelines that allows um, a number of quotations to be received from the people to offer the services. So um, it's not that you'll outrightly just come with um, the person you know or have been working with. You have to follow some procurement guidelines there. Okay, so um, I'll, 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 I'll take... Uh, we are running a bit out of time, but we have um, a few more questions, three questions, which we will answer uh, quickly um, so that we can close uh, this out. So uh, from Fatma, she says, um, uh, my company has 30 years experience in Zimbabwe and Zambia, but in Tanzania, we have just started eight months old. Are we allowed to use the experience we, uh, we have in um, the other countries to make us uh, eligible um, in Tanzania? And I'll combine this with um, a, quest a question from Adrian. Our holding company will be 18 months old in July 2021 by the time the applicants are shortlisted. Is this okay? Steve? Yes. <laughs> ah, this edge question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I would say no and yes, bye. <laughs> so for the, for the first case, um, so I mean, for upfront, it's like it seems to me that uh, you know probably not eligible. Um, so if you repeat the scenario, I'll do a bit more analysis verbally. The first case was. Um, the company has over 30 years experience in Zimbabwe and Zambia, but uh, about eight months old in Tanzania. So it's, 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 unfortunately it's a cutoff. It's likely to be no. Um, and even if, you know, the company by the time it reaches, you know, uh, the end of the, uh, the uh, call will not be more than 18 months. So it's a bit difficult for us to accept it. It's pretty simple. Yeah. And the next question was 18 months just in July, in June, when we're doing this July. election. July. July. Unlikely not. There's the cutoff date of 15th of June. If it's less than 18 months, it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely. I mean, you can still apply, but it's very unlikely. Thank you. Um, if an applicant has not registered, has no registered company, but has already invested, have a borehole water pumping for drip irrigation, has land and is using drip irrigation and fish ponds, in the event uh, they establish a partnership with a registered company, will he qualify? I couldn't even think about this scenario. Okay. Um, my first hand would be no, because the actual project likely wasn't existing 18 months ago. Actual project. So my first inclination would say no, but again, apply. You know, it does it doesn't, I mean it costs time, but fundamentally, you know, because the project itself and the innovation itself hasn't been in existence for 18 months, or the, the, you know, it's very unlikely. But again, I don't like closing doors too much. Thank you. Yeah. In the, um, this is from Tay, uh, in the application for the question, how many paying customers have you had in the last 12 months? Is it expected to answer this for your company on a global level? or only in the country where you apply for? 
that's an interesting question. Yeah. I would say primarily, I think in the country you're applying for, but provide us information for the rest of the business. It's always interesting to know, okay, you've done this in, in this particular country, but you have the capability to do a lot more. So I would say how much you have in that particular country, but if you have, obviously you have the information for the rest of the group, it's interesting for us to, to see it because it gives us an idea of your capacity to scale. Thank you. And we are getting to the last uh, question. Um, can revenue from our parent company that is not one of uh, eligible countries contribute to the turnover requirement for our subsidiary in Kenya? Simply put, no. no. Okay. Um, Ariel, have we gone through all the questions? I... If, can, I, can I add on to something on that question? I've seen sure. cases where actually people do transfer pricing or transfer of revenues, et cetera, et cetera. We will look at that. There's a question, a clear indication as to know if you have a holding company or a larger company somewhere and revenue is generating in one of the seven countries and there's some transfers between those ones, we want to see those to make sure that we're talking about companies that are actually doing business in the countries. Thank you. All right, um, unless uh, someone wants to ask their question, uh, unmute themselves and ask their question. Um, I think we've gone through the list of yes. all the questions. Yes, Rachel, we got all of them that were submitted. Um, so I'm just putting the link in here again to one more poll. Oh, there looks like there's one more question from Darlington. Rachel, if you want to field that, and then we can sort of take the closing poll. So Delinton, if I have an innovative product that is ready to go to the market after experimenting for some years, but I need final approval from the Bureau of Standards to give me the MBS approval codes um, for my product. For them to do that, they need to visit factory place of production, which is not ready due to um, finances as I need capital. Uh, can I apply for the financial support investment to procure the equipment and prepare the production place? The product is clear of taker for farmers who are our raw material supplier. The, 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 thank you for the question. The short answer is, has your product been, has your business been operational for more than 18 months? Has those pro this product been bought? For more than 18 months it's a yes or no question if it's yes then whatever validation you need from a an entity authorization entity etc in your country does not bear that much importance at this point but if your product or your company is in existence registered in the country for more than 18 months you are eligible And, and Rachel Ardmore has has messaged. He's still requesting a little bit of clarity on on the value of the technical assistance. Ardmore, do you want to? I had seen you had unmuted. Do you want to go ahead and just ask for the clarity? Yeah, I wanted to to understand to say how much is covering like a, a grant direct, and the, how much is technical assistance uh, in our liquid in in the. 50 to 20,000 requests that an enterprise can put forward. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the question, Admiral. So let's say you're requesting 100,000 euros. Okay, maximum 20,000 euros can be in cash. And for that 20,000 euros, you have to contribute in kind or in cash. Is that clear? Yes, great. Thank you. Thanks. And it's also milestone based. Yeah. So Ariel, over to you to close. So we definitely look forward to your applications. Um, and I would just uh, mention, please do check in the FAQs on the website. I put the link in the chat. Uh, we'll be updating those with all of the questions that were asked today. 
Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out for us. I also put the we for f email address in there. You can always write to us for any clarity um, or if you get stuck as you're working on your application. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's it for my side, Rachel, back to you. Okay, um, great. Thank you very much for your time, for attending this session and for asking questions. We look forward to your applications and as Ariel has uh, mentioned, feel free to keep dropping the questions through the mailbox and also through the contact 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 page on um, the microsite. So thank you very much and have a good rest of the day. The next um, q and and before session will be on 10th June, which is, will be on a Thursday at um, same time, 11. So thank you very much. Um, have a good day. And thank you, Martin, for dropping the, the link to the website. All right. Bye. Bye.